Happy holidays. Good seeing you. The coaches. One gift stands out above all the rest. When I was a kid, I remember electric football. Yes! We did it, boys! I remember when we got it at Christmas. All my buddies came over and we played until 1 o'clock in the morning. There was such an excitement about getting that game and you ripped the box off and you plugged it in and you got the teams lined up on each side and then you turned it on and they just went... Mm -hmm. No one went anywhere. <laughs> It might take you a whole hour to score. I mean, it was unbelievable because you can never keep the guys straight. My older brother and I, and we only got about a quarter in because we'd beat the hell out of each other by the end of the first quarter. And uh, mom would take the wooden spoon to us. That'd be the end of electric football for the evening. I'd get one of those for Christmas about once every three years. You had to kind of replace it because the little guys started getting worn out and running backwards. That's about the best Christmas present I could ever have right there. You know? Thank you. It was a great game. Electric football. It's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. That's what I think. Is this an actual game cover or an advertisement? I remember. This was an ad, and it actually appeared on the boxes of that game. That was 1962. Tudor just introduced that large game. They just introduced these players, which are 3D players. So they were the first ever 3D players in electric football history. And to do that, they found these two um, young boys who happened to be uh, friends of the graphic designer. Now, was it always a uh, plastic? Uh players on this metallic surface? or The what? early players were plastic on a metal base, the earliest players, which I think we'll get to in another shot. Um, and then they changed over to plastic as most of the toys started to go plastic. Plastic became cheaper to use, uh, easier to work with. So yeah, the, the players have been plastic since the early 50s. Wow, wow. The uh, paperwork that you would get okay. from the electric football yes. company is, and uh, <laughs> you know, ordering a team or two and you know, uh, some of us uh, like the AFL, and you, know, <laughs> you, you sometimes didn't get uh, the, the colored uh, uniform that you wanted. No, or... and sometimes you didn't get the team you want. <laughs> I had an experience of ordering my teams, and then I got the box back, and they were short one. It's short the one I really wanted, and that, that was a common experience. But you know, think about it: the, the teams were shipped from Hong Kong. They ended up in Brooklyn, so it wasn't like today where you could FedEx the things, and they oh. would they would run out of stock. So wow. Oh. But this is one of the... Uh, that is the very first, first game. That is the game that was invented by Norman Sass at Tudor Metal Products. He invented the game in 1948. It came onto the market in 1949. And what was the reception uh, to the American toy buying public to this? They sold them out completely in that first year. Wow. Even, they even sold them out to the point where, within our research, if you look at toy ads from um, January of 1950, you can find stores that are announcing they just got the game back in stock. And this is in January after Christmas, so people are still looking for the game at that time. Yeah, Norman Sass um, told us that he was blown away by the reception of the game. He never envisioned that it would, right off the bat, have the success that he had with it. This was the first one where you could put your men on the field. <clears throat> Maybe they didn't run straight, but they ran all by themselves. And in 1949, we argue that that's just as big a deal as PlayStation would be in the 90s. Mm -hmm. it, it's just that kind of thing. It was ahead of its time and it lent itself to if you really wanted to envision a football game on your living room floor, you could because the men were, were going all over the place. The, the Great Summit, so yes, to speak? Yes, that, that is actually Norman Sass is on the left, the president of Tudor Metal Products. This was 1971. He's receiving his second consecutive Sears Roebuck Award of Excellence for the Super Bowl that they were providing Sears at that point in time. And also at that point in time, probably the more important point, uh, Tudor was the NFL's top money maker. And they were and the NFL's top money maker from 67 to about 77. So the award was of such import that Pete Rozelle, Com the came, commissioner. Came, yes, the commissioner of the NFL came to the award ceremony for Tudor to receiving their Sears award. So that, that speaks to how important the game was to the NFL, believe it or not. Start with a kickoff. We've got the Broncos ready to kick, and the Steelers back to receive. Okay, we're all set to kick off. Oh, right to him. All right, number 50 has the ball. Let's see what happens. Oh, tackled at the 40. All right, let's try a running play. We've got Broncos on defense, Steelers on offense. Number 44's got the football. Let's turn it on and see what happens. 
Now he chased the corner. He's on the way. Touchdown.